Hi everyone and welcome back to Developer Soapbox. Today I want to show you what I believe is the next big thing in the world of development, Grow VM. So right now Grow VM is going through the same thing that uh, Docker went through a few years back where I, I feel like a lot of developers hear about it but they're really not quite sure on how to get started um, or and how to use it, right? So in this video, I want to show you what GrowVM is from a developer's perspective and how to install and use it. I do plan uh, to make this a video series on GrowVM. So if you'd like to get notified when those come out, please do hit that subscribe button. So the, the website itself, the GrowVM website, uh, does provide a pretty good uh, description on it. But um, to summarize it for you, at a high level, GrowVM is a framework which allows uh, many different languages to run on the Java Virtual Machine or JVM. So what it means is that you can write your code in JavaScript, Python, Ruby, R, Java, you know, Kotlin, Scala, etc. And you'll be able to execute it on the same runtime environment as long as GrowVM is installed. So not only that, but you can also call the different languages between each other. So you can call, you know, for example, Java from your JavaScript script or uh, Ruby from Java and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, GrowVM does get a lot more awesome than that. And it provides, you know, this whole framework for easily porting uh, new languages to the GV JVM, compiling uh, JVM code directly into machine code. Uh, and it does provide the super optimized uh, just-in-time compiler. But since this is a uh, basics video, I'll keep, I'll keep the focus on the high-level functionality, which I, I do believe is what most uh, developers are interested in. So let's get started with the installation instructions for Windows 10. So uh, go to the GrowVM site, which we're in right now. So it's just growvm.org and click on the downloads button right here, up here. So once in here, go down to community edition and click on download from GitHub. Once on GitHub, uh, slow, uh, scroll down to the Windows AMD 64 version. Uh, so these are actually the zip files with the binaries instead of an easy to use installer, but the process really isn't that bad. Uh, they, they do provide both versions of the uh, long term term support editions of Java. Uh, I'm just going to select the uh, Java 11, which is the latest long term support. And let's go ahead and save that. Click OK, and it's going to start the download. So uh, once once you download the file, go ahead and move the zip file. So it downloaded to my downloads directory. Uh, go ahead and move uh, the zip file to the final location you like your binaries to be in. Uh, for me, I'm just going to place it in uh, my documents. So uh, once in there, just right click on the file and do uh, extract all. Uh, I'll leave the default location and just click uh, click on extract. And you may have noticed that I am skipping uh, the download and extract process, and th that's just to save you guys time, right? Uh, so you don't have to watch the files being extracted. So uh, here it did extract to this directory. So for the last step, we'll need to tell Windows where to look for the binaries whenever they ca the we call programs uh, from the command line. Uh, so we do this by uh, updating the path environment variable to include the bin directory. So this directory right here, which is what includes all of our um, WowVM binaries. So uh, for this, click on the start menu and start typing environment. Um, and, and it's this option right here. So edit system environment variables will show up. So go ahead and click on that and click on the uh, edit or uh, environment variables button down here. Then go down here into system variables and double click on the path uh, entry. Okay, so now go back to the unzip location and navigate to the bin directory, which we're already in right now, and go ahead and copy this path. So I'm going to hit Control C to copy. Go back to your uh, path environment entry, click on new, and just do paste, and you can click out of it. So now one thing you do have to be careful with is a uh, file name collision. So if you do have another uh, Java JDK installed, like I do here, right? So I have another J JDK 11. Um, you will have to move your Grow VM entry up before that so that uh, Windows looks at that uh, the bin directory first. So I'm just going to click move up all the way up until it's before my other uh, JDK. Go ahead and click OK and OK. So now if I open a command line, uh, terminal and I do for example Java dash version you can see that it is using the Grow VM um, version of it 
So uh, now, now here for the caveat, right? So I do have some sad news if you are a Windows user. So unfortunately, at the time of this video, that this video is being made, uh, support for Windows is considered highly experimental. So what that means is that not all features and languages are currently available for Windows. Uh, so other than the standard Java utilities, the only uh, new thing that you do get is, for example, a JavaScript uh, interpreter as well, right? And possibly faster execution um, through a, the, the highly optimized just-in-time compiler. But, you know, and there is a but here. I, I do like you guys uh, way too much to leave you hanging like that. So you do have a couple of workarounds, um, you know, all involving some way uh, to execute Linux uh, within Windows, right? So uh, Linux, the Linux version of GraalVM within Windows. So for example, you can use Docker or a virtual machine application like VirtualBox. Uh, but the one that I believe is the most straightforward for uh, most people is using the Linux sub subsystem feature uh, in the Windows 10 Professional Edition. And that's the uh, workaround that I'll be showing you guys right now. Okay, so to enable this feature, the uh, Linux subsystem, so let's go ahead and click on the Start menu and type start typing features to search for it. Features. And it's this option right here. So turn Windows features on and off. And this little window is going to pop up and scroll all the way to the bottom. And you're going to see this option right here, Windows subsystem for Linux. Go ahead and hit that box and hit OK. And uh, it's essentially going to go through the install process. And once uh, it finishes the initial installation, go ahead and restart. You will have to restart this for uh, for the Windows to completely install it. So let's go ahead and restart it now. And I'll pause the video once again. So uh, once you're, you're back, once your reboot's done, go ahead and go to the Start menu again. And this time we're going to start typing to search for Store, right? So go ahead and click on the Microsoft Store. And that's going to open up. Go ahead and click on search, right here, search, and start typing uh, Ubuntu and click enter. Okay, so go ahead and select, and, and you do actually have multiple choices for uh, what kind of uh, Linux distribution you want to use. Uh, we're just going to use the standard Ubuntu, uh, and you can also select here the different versions. Let's just stick with the default Ubuntu. Go ahead and click that, uh, click install. So once installed, uh, go ahead and open a, a new command line uh, window and type in Ubuntu and hit enter. And the, the first time you do uh, execute this, it'll um, finish the installation process. So you did download and install it on uh, the Microsoft Store, but it also does some uh, initialization and so on once you, um, you run Ubuntu for the first time. And the, the last thing it's going to ask you to do is go ahead and set up your username. So I'm just going to do develop for soapbox and type in your password. And it's going to ask for your password again and hit enter. And that's it. So now you're actually running uh, Linux within Windows. So you can do, you know, any all sorts of um, Linux commands. So now that we have our Ubuntu subsystem set up, uh, let's go ahead and go back to the GraalVM site. So either Google GraalVM or go directly to graalvm.org. Uh, again, go to Downloads, Community Edition, scroll down, Downloads from Download from GitHub. So uh, you know exact same instructions as the Windows Edition, but instead of downloading uh, Windows, we're actually going to do now the Linux um, AMD64 version. So go ahead and click. On that and save. So once the download completes, we need to put this file in a place where the Linux subsystem has access to. So I'm just going to do Control C to copy, and that location can be accessed. So I'm up right up here on the address bar. It's uh, back backslash 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 w s l and dollar sign. And I think it's it's probably Windows Subsystem Linux. That that's probably what the WSL is. And hit enter. And here you can see uh, the Ubuntu further uh, folder. Go ahead and click that. Click on Home. Then your username. You're probably just gonna have your one user in here. So go ahead and click on that. And I'm just gonna paste it on here just to keep things simple. 
So now that my zip file is in my home directory, I'm gonna again go back to my uh, terminal and I'm still, I, I'm still in my Linux subsystem. As you can see, if you've exited out by accident, just again, just type in Ubuntu to go back into it. And if I do LSL to list the contents of this directory, you can see that there's my zip file right there. So in order to unzip this file, so in Linux, I'm gonna use the tar utility. So I'm just gonna do tar x z v f and the file name and you can't just you can just uh start typing growl and hit um tab and it will auto complete for you and hit enter so once the file is fully unzipped uh just like we did in windows we also have to um, update our path variable so that uh, the system knows where to look for the those executables whenever we type the commands right so for linux uh that's uh, that's available in the .bashrc file. So here I'm in, again, where we type the slash slash uh, WSL dollar sign, right, um, and so on. So I'm just gonna right click on .bashrc and do open with, and you know click on more apps and select notepad and okay. So go all the way down to the bottom of the file and in order to uh, append to our path variable, what we're gonna do is path equal to and then we're gonna go uh, what you're gonna do is go into your growl vm um, directory and bin and again copy that whole path and go back here and i'm gonna do quotes paste and quotes again so now the only other thing that we do need to modify here is um we do need to use a Linux convention, right? So Linux, the Linux subsystem doesn't really know about this part right here of the path, right? As far as it's concerned, the it's root and then home and, and your user and so on. So we're gonna turn, um, we're gonna take this out and then just flip your slashes. So instead of backslash, it's forward slash, right? So forward slash home, replace that one and that one. And lastly, that one. And then uh, we're appending this in front of the existing uh, value of path. So do colon dollar sign path. And what this is doing again is it's saying my value of my path is equal to the contents of this directory. Uh, and then append after that the current value of path. So that's what this is doing here. And do make sure that you save uh, the, the file once you've edited the, the contents. So go ahead and control S or, you know, file uh, save and then open uh, your uh, command line terminal again. And if you've closed it, just type Ubuntu again, and that's going to put you in your home directory, right? So um, just do source dot bash RC and hit enter. And that's going to reload the contents of your bash RC file, which is the file that we've just updated. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, bashrc, it's just the file that um, essentially is loaded every time that you open a command line terminal in Linux. So it, it loads all of your environment variables and stuff like that. And that's it for the workaround. So you'll now be able to use all the available GraalVN commands in Windows 10. So that's pretty awesome. And now that you have a proper installation setup, let me get your appetite wet with some of the features. So just as before, you can type Java dash version, just to validate that you do have, uh, you know, the Grau VM uh, JDK installed. And to show you all the tools that you do get, let me jump back to the bin directory, right? So we're again in Grau VM bin. So scrolling down, you can see that you get your standard, you know, out of the box, uh, open JDK stuff. So uh, Java, Java C, Java doc, and so on. Um, but look down here, so you do get, like I said, the node, you do have NPM, so you can also install, um, you know, JavaScript, any JavaScript library that's available through NPM, you can also install. And this is the, the tool that, you, that you're probably gonna like the most is uh, GU, which is uh, the Grau uh, updater. And what this allows us to do is uh, install new uh, languages and features into our uh, Grau VM. Right, so um, right now, as far as supported languages, right, so we have uh, Python, Ruby, R, uh, you know, the JVM languages, obviously Node, 
um, and then you can also use uh, C and C++, right? So let, let's go ahead and install uh, Python, for example. So what you're gonna do is type in the GU command, followed by install and Python, and hit enter, and that's gonna go through the download and install process. And once the install is complete, you can go back to your bin directory, and let's do a refresh here. And you can see that it installed Growl Python. And I, in this case, I think that it, it doesn't install just, it, it named the Growl Python instead of Python because, uh, you know, Linux is, uses Python so much, I think it, it just uh, didn't want to take a chance having the, the collision in that case. And so uh, you can also install Ruby. So let's install Ruby. So I'm going to do gu install Ruby. And again, hit enter. And once Ruby is installed, same thing. If we go back here and do a refresh, we can see that it installed, you know, if you're familiar with Ruby and Ruby on Rails, if you're familiar with Gem, Bundler, Bundle, um, you also have uh, Rake, uh, Ruby, uh, IRB, which is the interpreter. So for example, if I do IRB enter, you know, I now, I'm now in the Ruby um, interpreter, right? So I can do, again, simple commands. Let's do exit. And in all my examples so far, I'm just using the interpreter uh, just to keep it simple. So uh, one thing that might be attracted away from you right now is uh, that these are using, again, these are using the JVM, right? So uh, we have all of these languages and interpreters, but they're still using the JVM. So the performance gains, especially in things, uh, for example, in the case of Ruby, uh, there's been ben benchmarks that have shown a 400% increase in performance compared to the standard uh, Ruby engine. And so far I've been using uh, just the uh, interpreters, uh, but obviously, uh, you know, as a developer, you're gonna be writing actual scripts, right? So let's let's uh, do an example of that. So I do have a Visual Studio Code here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the directory where uh, all my stuff is, right? So it's, um, it's within the Linux subsystem, right? So again, that path, right? And your user and hit select folder and I'm gonna create a new Python script. So new file, and I'll just call this, you know, my script.py, you know, something super original. And then I'm just gonna do some very simple scripting here. So hello, and I'm just gonna print that and save. So I'm doing control S. So if I go back here uh, to my command line terminal uh, within the Linux subsystem, I'm just gonna do growl Python and my my script.py hit enter and you can see that it executes it and that's how you install GraalVM in, in Windows uh, again you know there was a caveat but uh, hopefully you know this the, this workaround did redeem uh, itself uh, I, I do plan like I, like I mentioned in the beginning I do plan to create uh, many more videos on the specific functionalities of GraalVM so if you haven't enjoyed this video or you'd like to stay up to date on my any of my new videos uh, that I release please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button uh, also let me know any other topics or features that you guys would um, are interested in uh, hearing from me so uh, please leave that on the comments down below so see you guys next time